Sarah also has her heart set on including a Western Australian grass tree. She's so attached to it, she's given it a name. Lola rocked up on the truck. Oh, look, here it is. That's bigger than what we thought. Here she is. That's beautiful. Isn't it? She's 200 years old. 200 years old, that's cool. The first question is, how are we going to get it into our house? That tree there, we just need that in house too. Yep, how much does it weigh? Uh, it's not about what it weighs, mate. It's about how, <laughs> how good it is. When I picked Lola, I didn't realise how much work was in it. Put it that way. Never go to pick out exanthrees or grass trees with the contestant, because they're always going to pick the biggest one. We were going to somehow get it off the truck and get into the home. Did you choose a 400 kilo grass tree? Of course I did. In the house too, we just go hard. I'm a bit nervous getting this tree here. <laughs> I'm nervous for you guys. We had asked the question about using a crane, and it was a simple no. If they can get it into here, like, they, they can go there, it's just where they quickly crane it over. Yeah. Crane has to, we have to go to council and... Yeah, OK, no. Yeah, right. How are they going to get it in now? Good question! We went back and forth and trying to figure out how she was actually going to get in the house. We can't get the crane in. OK. What I think what we're going to do tonight is just leave it for today yeah. so that we can sort of concentrate on finishing everything else off. We are so pressed that it's just not going to happen. There's not much moving in House 5, thanks to three giant rocks. We've had a delivery of rocks for the Flintstones house. Flintstones, meet the Flintstones. Some big rocks. Yabba dabba doo! You I wasn't aware that we were getting massive boulders in the front yard, so and no one else had organised anything to uh, to move them. I think they thought we were going to move them by hand, but as you can see, they're quite big rocks. We've got the crane in the backyard from P and D. Might go out and have a chat to him. Sounds good. See what they can do. They're already here. Yeah. So the we're paying boys. for the crane, but we'll sort the boys out. Well, and me. And you. <laughs> <laughs> Did you sort of pat on the back for losing yesterday? Or? I want you to admit our team was... <laughs> hey, mate. How are you? Good, mate. How much do you love beer? Yeah, I like it. Crane is the best option. There's one here on the block. Uh, beer economy is strong on construction site. Just got a small job for you on the way out this afternoon, if you can. Yeah, yeah just got to lift those rocks over the fence. Yeah, no how many beers do you think it's worth? Worth? Well, I mean, it would probably cost me, you know, between 1500 and two grand to get a crane here, so oh, we'll spend a few hundred. <laughs> We're in a pretty good position, so I'm not stressed about it. I'll sound like a dickhead. Very good rock placement. We Perfect rock placement. It's really good. Oh, thank you very much. You're welcome. Get out of My here. My job is done. Everyone's looking pretty happy in House 5, but I've spotted a less happy face down the other end of the block. Somehow, Dave realised that House 5 was using a crane that the site was using to drop in some rocks. House 5. You may remember House 2's 400 kilogram grass tree, which, when they last saw it, was looking unlikely to find a home in Sarah and George's front yard because they weren't allowed to crane it in. Favouritism at House 5, not good. I didn't think that the crane was something that we could utilise. Freaking House 5, whatever, you know? I'm over it, really. I get told that you need a permit to crane over. I couldn't crane over my grass tree, right? I just said, I noticed that they had, that had rocks down there, and they said, right, yeah, no, and he goes, oh, you just let it slip, that I've got the crane coming around here, and he's putting the crane in there. Now, why can't I do that? So he said, well, if House Five's doing it, House Two's doing it too. I'm going to check this out. Hey, mate. Yeah, mate. What's up? How come he's allowed to crane in? 
Well, you told me today I need a you know, cancel requirement and all that sort of stuff. And yeah, you know, House Five's got rocks. And now he's getting craned in. Why is he getting craned in? We can't. Um, Jimmy, seeing that there's a crane at the back, had come yeah. and asked us whether he could use it. Yeah. The boy said, yeah, they had a spare hour. They'd come around and lift it for a small fee. Yeah, right. You didn't think to tell me that? I thought we were mates. So you're saying you want a quick lift? Is that OK? If I yes. get you, if I buy you a couple of beers, give you a hug, give a kiss. Yeah. We're, we're we, friends? We can lift it in for you, mate. Can you? Yeah. That's right. I'll stop my whinge in then. Done. Okay. I, love, Dave -o. I love catching up with you, Dan. Yeah, mate. It's always good. It's always a pleasure. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> hey, good chat. Good, good chat, chat though. <laughs> So he organised for Lil to make her way back down to house two from the storage yard, got the crane and put her into her spot. Her name was Lola, she was a showgirl. There she goes. Let's get the tree in first. And give him a six pack each side. Sarah, what's her name? It's Lola, but it's now George. It's got your name on the side. It actually looks like me. <laughs> oh, it was much easier once we got a crane. So, thanks, House Five. She's in. Happy day, mate. I'm more than happy, mate. <laughs>